What's good, everybody? It is your boy, Jimmy Smeckle from Jim Reviews, here today with a comparison. And this is a comparison that all the people have been asking for on my IG, on the comment section. And sometimes I'm like, I hate doing comparison videos. But like I said, this one has been very much requested. So like I always say, this is giving the people what they want. And today we got the Nike Pegasus 37. This is probably the most popular running shoe in the world right now. Like the Pegasus line within itself is like the most popular shoe in running. So this is definitely one of the goats of running shoes as far as I'm concerned, at least as far as popularity. But is that shoe better than the Hoka One One Clifton 7? This is the main series of what Hoka provides as a running shoe. If you ask anyone about a Hoka, this is the one they refer to when they say, yeah, I like the Hoka 1-1, that's a good shoe. They mean the Clifton. This is the Clifton. So what shoe is better? Pegasus, Clifton. And like most comparison videos, it's a preference. And a preference and also a purpose. Now typically I would say the Pegasus is more of a neutral trainer that has a little more of a pop, a little more speed. And the Clifton is much more on the cushion end. A little more stack height, a little more bulkiness to the shoe. Still relatively the same weights, but just kind of different setups. A little more of a roll off. Well, in recent years, I've kind of been feeling like Nike's been going more towards the Hoka feel. You're probably like, Jamie, stop. What are you talking about? Hoka, Nike's two different things. Well, I don't know. About five, six years ago, everyone was saying like how Hoka's were too bulky because of stack heights. And, you know, it kind of had that rolling guy feel and kind of had that springiness going forward, but didn't flex as much. And I'm kind of feeling like that's kind of what these shoes are becoming. Not just Nike, but across the board. Like there's literally a stack height regulation on running shoes now, as far as racing marathons and like official races. So yeah, we're at that point now. So it's definitely a trickle down effect. And this Pegasus, at least from how it feels, it feels a little more like a Hoka. And after having some time with both shoes, I'm starting to feel like this year may be more of a comparison. So let's break it down. First shot, the similarities. Do you guys not see the heel tabs? They are like flaring outward. And this is something that I feel like Adidas kind of made popular first, and then Nike kind of like exaggerated it more, and then every company after that just follows suit. So now every shoe is doing this whole flaring out heel tab here. So as you can see, Nike has it, Hoka has it, New Balance is doing it. I'm not sure who's not doing it now. If you're not doing it, you should probably do it now before it's too late. Now people might have the idea that your heel might slip out, I haven't had any issues with that as far as either shoe. Like, not enough to be like, oh man, this is a bad idea. I think it's more of an aesthetic thing for me, but sure, people who have Achilles issues may not have it in these shoes, so aesthetically, it changed in the Hoka. It's been the same in the Pegasus for about three years now, so similarity. As far as your uppers, I think the Nike's Pegasus is a little more of a stiffer material, but also a little more advanced. And I don't mean stiff in the sense like it hurts or it's not like it doesn't feel good, just the material itself has more of like a synthetic feel to it. Whereas the mesh and the Clifton feels a little more of a softer feel to it. They both fit okay. And let's break that down. As far as the toe boxes, I would say both the Pegasus and the Clifton are about average size. If you prefer a lot of wide toe box space, they're about the same. If your foot's not terribly wide or terribly narrow, you'll be fine. I will say the volume of the toe box of the Pegasus takes some time to really adjust. It kind of pushes down a little bit on your top of your foot right in this area. So if you're someone with a high volume foot, you might feel a little pressure, but over time it's gonna break in. So after about three runs, you probably won't feel a big difference. So don't be alarmed if you're like, man, it's too tight, just give some time. With the Clifton, it was good out of the box. So that's that. The midfoot lockdown, I would say both are pretty pretty snug in the midfoot. Like I know the Hoka looks bulkier, so you might think, oh, it fits like really wide. Mm, I would say they fit relatively similar as far as the midfoot lockdown. Maybe a tad snugger in the Pegasus, but you would need them side by side to really tell the difference. But hey, the heel cups. I would say the heel cups are very similar as far as the whole flaring out heel action going on. But I would say the Clifton's heel cup is a little more secure. I feel like it had a little more of an angle, so it kind of cupped your foot in a little more securely. Whereas I had maybe a slight, slight, slight heel slip in the Pegasus, but you know, it's it wasn't enough to complain about. It's just a little more rounded off inside the heel cup, inside the shoe, but that's that. As far as flexibility, I mean, definitely the Pegasus is not as flexible as it used to be, and the Clifton is 
it's a cliff, and Hokas are not ever really flexible. Hence why they have the meta rocker and the high stack heights. This one wasn't much different than this one, honestly. It's the way of the game nowadays. And then also you have the tongue difference. The tongue in the Pegasus is a little more plush, a little more cushion going on. It feels very comfortable, doesn't rub against your foot, doesn't move out of place. Definitely a little more on the comfort side. Whereas the Pegasus has a flat tongue, kind of has that, I guess, anatomical shape. It wasn't bad though, it wasn't bad though. I had some flat tongues that just cut into me. So we didn't have that problem. So if you prefer a more cushion tongue, the Clifton, but the Pegasus is a little more of a nimble, lightweight, minimal tongue, which is cool, because in this case it works. The style of shoe, they're both neutral, meaning if you're someone with a typical foot strike, you're like not over pronating, you're just like a normal foot strike for the most part, these shoes kind of just ride the way you run. If you mid foot strike, you mid foot strike. If you heel strike, you heel strike. I've had some people tell me that Hocus are meant for heel strikers, that's why it's so thick. So they don't wear a Hocus because, you know, they midfoot strike, but then they'll wear a Nike Pegasus that clearly has like an edge to it with a pretty steep heel and a higher drop, which this one has a lower drop. So I'm not sure about the whole midfoot, forefoot thing. I think the way you run is the way you run. If your shoe's between four and 10 millimeters, I think you're, you're, just, you're gonna land the way you land. But that's just my opinion, not a fact, just how I feel. Cushioning wise, you have more cushion for the push and the pace in the Pegasus than ever before. We now have full react in the midsole. We don't have the Kushlon. And we also have a bigger size zoom bag in the forefoot. And people are very into the whole like zoom bag. It's it's bigger, it's twice the size, it's 20 PSI and 15 in the women's and that's all great and dandy, but how does it feel? To me, it feels good, but it definitely adds a lot more cushion, a lot more bulk to the shoe as far as the ride of the shoe compared to the previous version. But I would still say that compared to the Hoka Clifton 7, I still feel that the Clifton 7 is a bulkier shoe as far as how it feels. But I also feel that was the purpose of this shoe. And as far as a more responsive speed shoe to a very clunky cushion shoe, I feel like the last year's Pegasus was like right in the middle towards the speed side. And this Clifton is a little bit closer to what the Hoka is. So I won't quite say it's a Hoka, but it's definitely more a Hoka-esque, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't make sense, but that's okay. Now on the outsole, both shoes have some rubber, but it's a no-brainer here. When it comes to rubber, the Nike Pegasus is giving you a lot more. Like on the lateral side, you have the rubber on the side here. It kind of helps the transition with the way it's cut out with the flex grooves here. Definitely more rubber on the medial side, all the way through the bag, gives the shoe a little more structure. The Hoka's, they are just known for being exposed outsoles. You do get more rubber on this than you do on shoes like the Rincon, but as far as Hoka's, they're kind of known for being exposed, but that's what keeps the shoe so light. So you might say, man, this shoe is so much bigger, it must weigh a lot more. Well, it really doesn't, but that's also because the lack of rubber. So you get more cushion, but you lose some rubber. Does it change the durability of the shoe? For me, it's more aesthetics. It gets rubbed down pretty easily, but you know, it still works the same. It just won't look as pretty. These are pretty. And as far as looks, if you're like, you know, I want a shoe that I can like look good in and still run, uh, I'll Pegasus, Pegasus. Uh, the Clifton looks a lot better than it used to be, but unless you're going for that more Hoka look, which some people are nowadays. I mean, people are like, wearing Hoka's for style for some reason. I didn't think it would ever happen, but people do. Uh, my preference is the Pegasus as far as looks, but you know, this is not a bad looking shoe. Maybe like five years ago, uh, I don't know. But this here's a good look. Now, what would I use each shoe for? Both of these will be considered for me, daily trainers with a little more cushion. If you're a marathon training, if you're someone who wants one shoe, and you're like, I just want one shoe, I can do it all. These shoes will get you, for the most part, everything you need. Now, if you're someone who's like, man, I do tempo days, and I have long runs and recovery runs, and I have speed days, I would say then these will probably fit more so in like your daily training, your medium paced out runs. You're not going super up tempo or anything crazy. You're not doing mile repeats or anything like that. This is more so like, hey, I got an eight mile run, and I want to feel protected. Cool. So as far as impact protection, these shoes are top notch. I would give the nod a little more towards the Hoka Clifton than the Pegasus, but like I said, this is a little more speed in this one, a little more cushion in this one, but they're like side by side. Now, if I had to pick one shoe and one shoe only, because people are going to ask, which one's better? You get no other shoes, one shoe, that's it, no other brands, pick one. 
I would say the Pegasus is still probably the more versatile option. It is more cushioned than it used to be, but I feel like you can get a little more speed out of this one compared to the Clifton. And if you're already used to a traditional shoe, this is a you no know, pretty much a traditional style shoe. Whereas the Hoka is going to feel a little different. The Hoka is going to have a little more of that rocker feel, a little more of that cushion feel, and a little more of that quote Hoka feel. That's what a Hoka is. Now, if you're someone who does not like the way a Hoka feels at all, then it's clear as day. Go to Pegasus. This isn't going to change any thoughts you had on Hoka. This is more of what a Hoka is. Just refined. Now, for someone who's like, I don't want a high drop shoe. I want something that's meant for, you know, something I can recover in, something for long runs, for medium paced out runs. Then this is not a bad option. Now, I just said if I had to pick one shoe and that's it, and I only use one shoe, I'll pick this one. But if you give me the option to have multiple shoes, let's say a speed trainer, a medium cushion trainer, and a more cushion trainer, then I would probably put this somewhere between my medium trainer and my cushion trainer over the Pegasus. The Clifton 7 is a little more niche, but that's also a good thing if you have the option to have multiple shoes. For the purpose of being a more cushioned daily trainer, it's more my preference for that purpose. But if it's an all around purpose and I got one shoe and that's it, I don't want any more shoes and I gotta pick one, then this is gonna be a more versatile option. But the real problem is neither one's a bad shoe, like by any means, they're both really good shoes. And I'm glad I have both shoes. I'm very fortunate because they're both fun, they're both cushioned. This one looks a little better. This one feels a little bit better for longer runs. So it really is all based on your preference. If you're someone who likes a cushioned shoe and you have multiple shoes in your rotation, this is probably the way to go. If you're someone who's like, I need my first running shoe, I have 120 bucks and that's all I want to spend on one shoe, then I will say these. So yes, that is my comparison of the Clifton 7, Pegasus 37. Are you fans of the Clifton? Fans of the Pegasus? Well, I think everyone's a fan of the Pegasus, but you know what I mean. Let me know what you guys think about the shoes. Which one is the better shoe? Let me know in the comment section down below. Maybe we can argue about it. I don't know. Anyway, links will be down below if you want to try either shoe. And with that said, subscribe to the channel if this video helped you at all. If it didn't, just don't get mad at me. Leave a like still if you can. And as always, be sure to stay in school. Do not do drugs. And if you can, keep it tight.